Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the LD only walkthrough. Today we only have two things to do. First, we're going to look at all the teams for our Rift Beasts. So these are LD only teams for all the Rift Beasts. And there's two Rift Beasts we might be able to improve. So we're going to we're going to look at those and then we're going to do summons. And this time we have 8 or 9 LD summons. So we will see what hopefully we're hoping to get God, it'd be great to get an LD Spark, um, but we just would like to see if we can get some new toys, some units that we don't have. So uh, let's get started. We're going to hit the Rift Beast first. And we can see Light and Dark are both Triple S and, you know, over 4 million. Uh, double S for Wind, Double S for uh, Water, Ice, and Double S for Fire. So we'll start with the triple S's first and work our way down. And actually, wind is, I'm surprised it's double S. I didn't realize I'd gotten that. So I probably got that on uh, one of the auto runs. And so uh, this is the light beast. And the light beast is all about breaking through the shield. And so, and the best thing to do that is ignore defense. And I only have one monster, uh, Taru, who does ignore defense. Everyone else uh, does not have that ability. So looking at his runes, he's on attack, crit damage attack. <laughs> and honestly, these are not very good runes. Um, see, that one's not even plus 15. Uh, now this one has a nice fat attack percentage. Let's go look at Taru and let's see if we can improve his rooms a little bit. Uh, but we're not going to spend a lot of mana on this because we only have a couple million. We might not even be at two million right now. And uh, we need to save mana for summons. Yeah, we're at 1.5. Um, I was upgrading some siege teams earlier today and that just wiped right through the mana. So here's Taru. He's only at 16, plus 1600 attack, which is not enough for what he needs to be doing. Let's see if we got, we did get some attack uh, grinds. So we have been doing some R4. And it's going to allow us to do, so this rune is actually, it's only a hero, but it's got a 22% attack. Uh, let's see if we have, we do have a crit rate gem. So we're, well, actually, we don't want to use that here uh, because he's already at 54% crit rate. And one of the nice things about Taru is his skill 3, which is the one that ignores enemy defense, has an additional 50% crit rate bonus. So he's already at 100% crit rate. It is um, not good um, to pile crit rate on him. He doesn't need it anymore. So what we can do is we we already have crit rate. We already have, now that's not a very good crit damage. Um, and we don't have any good crit damage, but we can throw some HP on him, make him a bit tankier. Because one of the problems in the Rift raids is that he's pretty squishy, <laughs> and so uh, if he can stay around longer, he can do more damage. So well, first we'll show you the rest of the team. So Taru is the most important because he does the ignore defense and that really slaughters through the, the light beast shield. Um, and the other thing about the light beast is you want to do single attacks. Uh, the amount of damage done from multiple attacks is greatly reduced. Um, so his skill two is only one hit and his skill one is only one hit. Um, so then we have Crow in here, just Crow. Uh, now his skill three is single hit, skill two is one hit, but he brings along another hit, which doesn't do much damage. So the, the skill two doesn't help that much here. Um, but Crow is on attack, crit damage, attack. And um, he's got a 14% there, can't have attack there. I've been waiting for a attack percent root, uh, gem 
to put there to increase his attack. But he's at plus 1,800 uh, with 83% crit rate and 153% crit damage. He eventually needs to be switched to uh, Rage, uh, but I don't have good Rage runes right now. And he is squishy. He's only at plus 7,000 HP, and that's with 1,500 HP from an artifact. So um, this is pretty much a complete garbage artifact. Um, that helps a little bit. That's not very good either. So, um, I mean, one of the things to show you is if you're running an LD only account and you don't have the best runes, you can still get single, double, triple S on Rift Beast. It's not super difficult. Um, next monster on the, on the team is Helia, who can do an amazing amount of damage. Um, she's on an attack, crit damage, attack. Um, and she has a 24% attack sub there and a 14% there. Uh, she's at 91% crit rate and 157% crit damage, which is not too high. But she's on Vampire because she's really squishy. She doesn't even have uh, plus 6,000 HP. Now she's on, and that's with, again, another 1,500 HP. So one of the things I'll be doing... Most of the artifacts that are on my monsters are probably still gray or green because I haven't done a ton of artifact farming. So, you know, this is nothing. This doesn't help at all. Uh, ooh, a 5% crit damage and life drain a little bit. So, um, but she still hits decently hard. So that's why she's here. Mm -hmm. And then um, Vampire Lord is here. Uh mostly for his attack boat boost and we're using his attack leader skill and I'm not quite sure why he wasn't in the front he has 1400 defense so he should be okay in the front let's move him to front see if that helps the front line survive better um, and then Darian is in here for damage mitigation just to allow us to survive better to the end and then Shushu Shushu is on Speed, HP, HP, and uh, decent resistance, uh, and 1,400 defense, and 33, 33k HP, uh, and a little bit of speed, not a lot, but it has shield rooms as well to help spread that HP around a bit. Darian, same thing, 1,700 defense, uh, he's at 38k HP. Some resistance, some accuracy. He's not. A, he's on HP, HP defense, um, and he's got some good uh, subs as well. In fact, once once I get better grinds, because there's two percent, one speed, four percent. Once I get better grinds, he's going to do well. Um, and then he's on HP and defense artifacts. And I'm not really, if you want to pause the video and look at the artifacts, you can do that. But most, I wouldn't waste my time on that. Most of the artifacts and these guys are, are pretty garbage. So, um, so that's the team. Um, now, I have been converting the Vampire Lord to speed, crit damage, defense. Um, he needs to eventually be speed, crit damage, attack. Uh, but he needs the defense right now to be able to be in the front line. Uh, and he's just on a mixture of runes. Uh, one set to give the team more accuracy. One set to give the team more damage. And that's just to raise his crit rate. But um, And then he's got defense and HP for artifacts. So that's the team. Let's uh, see. We, we improved Taru a little bit. And we move the Vampire Lord to the front row. Let's see what happens with that. So we're just watching the run. Here comes the uh, shield is already up. And we're going to auto this. So he puts up his attack power break. You can see Weaken didn't do much. There, Crow does big damage. And then Helia breaks the shield. So first shield is already broken. Um, almost nothing on damage on the front row. So there we go. <laughs> Flew through that first part. 
Um, and now we're looking for debuffs. Um, so here comes the weekend. There's two more debuffs there. Uh, we're looking. There's the. Uh, what's that called? There's the brand. We got a slow in there as well. So now we got five debuffs. So Crow can do more damage. Crow gets one, gets one more scar in. We're at 3.4 million. Um, so we have a shot at a new record here. Here comes the shield again. Let's see who breaks it. Uh, Vampire Lord. Team up didn't do much. Taru took it down about one third. Now, okay, so the Vampire Lord took a pretty good hit there. And that might be why I didn't have him in the front row. He, he doesn't enough. He doesn't have enough HP right now. That's probably why I put him in the back row. So it looks like Crow broke the shield there. We're at 3.5 million. Here comes the shield again. There was an ignore defense, took out about a third. Crow took out a big chunk. Um, and actually the Vampire Lord did better that time around. I'm not, not quite sure why. Um, the big skill is coming up, so we need to see, can we get him down before he does his big skill? Uh, we did not. So we're at 3.7 million. How much damage do we take from this? So that's where Darien's damage mitigation comes in. Everybody survives, and we're going to kill him no problem. So um, there we go. Triple S, we didn't quite hit our... We didn't get a new high, but uh, that's the team. And when I do this on 10 runs, whenever the, the mission for the day is to do the Light Beast, it, it's almost always Triple S. So it's a very stable team. It's a great team. I would highly recommend it if you're doing an LD only. And if you're not doing LD only, uh, keep some of those things in mind. Uh, big single hit damage. Ignore defense is fabulous against the shield and against just the health of the boss monster as well. And then uh, Crow, it really doesn't matter what kind of account you're running. Crow is a, a god along with the Vampire Lord in Rift Beast. So those are two monsters everybody should consider using. So that's, that's light. Let's go to dark. Here's the team for dark. And dark is a little different. So dark... You need multi-hits, as many as you possibly can. And so, uh, now, <laughs> that being said, Basalt's in my front row. He's got a fight set, a will set, and a shield set. Um, and he's just really tanky. 1,500, approaching 1,600 defense, uh, about 32k HP. Um, and he's got HP artifacts, because... Uh, his damage is done based off HP. So he's on defense, HP, HP, and 63% uh, resistance, and uh, very, very low speed. Um, so his third skill is uh, does damage to all enemies and decreases the attack bar by 35%. That doesn't matter too much. Um, He's really here for a second skill, uh, recovers the HP of all allies, and increases their defense for two turns, and the recovery amount is based on his max HP. So really, once Basalt gets better runes on him, he should be very close to 40k or 45k HP, and then his heal will be much better. Um, skill 1 is, is kind of useless in this regard. Um, and then Darien's the other front row, front line member, and we've already gone over his runes. Um, and they're just there to take the soul chain. So they're going to get uh, captured by the boss and they won't be able to move. And then it's the job of the back row to unlock them before the next soul chain, ha soul chain happens. Because if two of your monsters get soul chained, the thorns are going to hit the back row and you're going to get slaughtered. Mm -hmm. And that'll be the end of your run. So, uh, Fran is a triple hit. 
Crow is a single hit, although now his team up comes in helpful. Because if he teams up with one of the back row, uh, so he already does one hit, and then whoever he teams up with uses their skill one. Uh, Emily is in here for her skill one, which is a triple hit. Eight hits on skill two, and two hits on skill three. So uh, and Emily is on speed, crit damage, HP. And there was a recent change I made to her. She was just too squishy in both R5, R4, and uh, Rift Beast. So uh, I put her on HP percent with a pretty good attack percent sub. So we're not losing, you know, we're learning, we're losing, we're losing 30% attack or so, but we're gaining uh, a lot of HP. Uh, and then she's got 16% attack there. I need to, um, this rune needs to be replaced um, because I want you don't want an attack percent in the innate. You can't grind it, so that needs to be down there with multiple rolls. So uh, she has some some ways to go. And then one HP and uh, now this is not a very good artifact, but crit damage is less enemy HP max twenty percent. It's an extra twenty percent crit rate. I'm sorry, not crit rate, crit damage. And her crit rate is pretty pathetic. So these runes need to be changed. But um, And once I get those better... Um, and then Helia is here. We've already gone over her runes. We might switch her out. Um, we might switch her out for Kamiya. But let's do one run first with this team. And see how it see how it goes. So here he comes. He's doing his dark roar. So he has captured Darien, and now we're looking at can we get him unchained? And so <laughs> um, Salt didn't take any damage from those first set of thorns. They're not very strong, but he had some really nice shield runes on him. So Darien has shield rune set, Basalt does, Fran does, um, and there we go, we're, we're into the groggy state, so now we're looking for where are our debuffs, and come on, there is a defense break, that's really important, and we're up to 1.5 million. Hoping Crow gets another scar in before the end of this. No, he did a team up instead. So 2.5 million. Um, should still be triple S. So now that's it's actually a little bit more ideal for Darien to get Soul Chain because Basalt can continue to heal and put up a defense break or a defense buff. But with him Soul Chain, we're not going to have that this time. So I think this team does better when Darien takes that soul chain uh, and not the salt. So now you can see we've got two things chained. This is a problem. Oh, and we're wipe. We're going to wipe. This team did not make it to double S or triple S. So, so we're going to try this one more time and we're going to pay attention to what Heli is doing. Um, I think her first skill only does one or two hits, and we're going to check on that. captures Basalt. I think we're going to do enough damage now. We might lose Darien. We did. But there we go. We did enough damage to kill the boss. Kill the Rift Beast. 
and it's an S. Even though I had triple S, I thought my Dark Rift Beast was pretty good, but we're not getting consistently triple S, so we're going to have to work on this one. So we're going to do just a quick change here. And see if so Camille is an option so she's three hits two hits one hit um, dark fairy could be an option later uh, driller could be an option later two times um, he'll, so he'll be three times on skill one, one and four times, um, and their Mac, the, the Rift Beast HP is going to be larger than his, so he's not going to, he'll be a four hitter there. So he's another option down the road, but for right now, who's six starred and ready is Kamiya. Uh, so we're going to see how this one works. Adding in another triple hitter. And then another person we can consider uh, is the Dark Vampire Lord because he has a larger attack lead and he does double hit on skill one, triple or four hit on skill two. So he's an option. I just really like having Emily in there with her eight hits on her second skill. Because that, that makes a huge difference in getting people unchained. And she probably also does more damage than the Vampire Lord. But another opportunity for improvement here is Emily's crit rate. It's only at 44%. That's horrible. So um, I'm kind of making, trying to make a mental note to myself here in this video that we need to rerun Emily get her crit rate up to around 80% or higher and I think we'll be seeing a lot more damage out of this uh, Emily which would make uh, this Rift Beast m much more likely to get to triple S so here we're going to see there's three hits from Kamiya double hit from Darian there, you know, another way we could, you know, Darian's passive is really helpful in keeping the team alive, so I don't see how he could be replaced anytime soon, but now we've got, there we go, we got Basalt Unchained, so he can easily take the Thorns, he didn't even lose 50% of his HP, so I think this run's looking pretty good. Getting a little low on HP here. It'd be nice if Basalt would use his heal and put up that defense buff. See, we're, we're getting to where the... Yeah, so the problem is with this one is we're not doing enough damage. So we're getting to where the Rift Beast is using his ultimate skill and just wiping us. So... Um, we need to do more damage. So we need to figure out how to add more damage in. Um, Dark Vampire Lord is a good option and getting Emily's runes improved. But that's where we're at on uh, Dark Rift Beast. So this is the team for fire. Noticing some trends here. <laughs> um, so Dark Vampire Lord for the attack power lead. Darian for his damage reduction and tankiness in the front row. Uh, Basalt is here as well because uh, tankiness, um, defense, HP, HP, and we need to get a six star HP on there someday soon, but um, he also has an AoE skill, AoE attack skill, so he helps, gets rid of the minions. Uh, Linda is very squishy here, but she's so good, her damage is so good. So Linda and Sige, so Linda is on speed, crit damage, accuracy. She needs to be on attack. If, if we could get her to, so she's on 77% accuracy right now, that's because we want her landing her debuffs. Uh, because 
she's used in Siege, she's used in other PvE content where she needs to be the debuffer, not necessarily the damage dealer. So we just need better runes for her. My violent runes aren't very good yet. Uh, so, but we will improve over time. And then she's got attack and HP. This would at least, you know, skill two crit damage, skill two accuracy, one turn, one target crit damage. Crit damage is more enemy HP. So at least all four, all four sub skills are actually useful to Linda. And then crit damage is less HP, additional damage by defense. And the last two are useless. Um, and I believe that's a that's a great rune, a great artifact. So Sige is here purely for damage. Uh, his AOE. And uh, this is actually probably the first time I'm running the Fire Beast with his buff where he now uses skill four. But I don't think that really matters much here because his skill three usually wipes all the minions. Uh, but he's on attack, crit damage, attack. And he's on 86% crit rate and 207% crit damage. He's on my only good rage set. And I think I stole one or two runes from Altair. Uh, he's at a, almost plus 2,000 attack. He's just way too squishy. But he's fully skilled now. Uh, and his accuracy is okay. His resistance is horrible. Um, but he does really well here. And then Crow is here to do massive damage to the boss uh, so that the boss doesn't get to use his ultimate skill. Mm -hmm. So I think this team has been bouncing between A plus and double S. Uh, so we'll see how it does here. Mm -hmm. So the minions are out, so we want somebody with an AOE attack. There goes Linda, boom, all gone. And then Crow and Sige take out half the boss's health. Um, shield runes absorb that hit. And there it goes. So Basalt took out the minions there. Um, so Basalt's AoE does damage based on defense. And his defense is pretty high 1400, 1600, something like that. So he does decent damage with that. So now we have a lot of debuffs on the boss. Now we're seeing how much damage Crow can do here. Crow still doesn't, he hasn't landed his brand yet. I think my Crow actually needs a little more accuracy. There's the brand. Um, so we're at 2 million damage coming out of the groggy state. Now can we survive to the end? We have the defense buff up, which is good. Here come the minions. And this is really all about the AI. Have my monsters save their AoE attacks? Linda did. Minions are all gone. Here come the minions again. Who can, who can use their AoE? Um, well, Basalt did to finish him off. I didn't quite catch who was that first one. but So now we're cruising towards halfway on the boss's health. There. Oh, so we missed the minions. But luckily, we had damage mitigation and a defense buff up from basalt so that's that's why those guys are there uh, so we managed to survive the thorns even with that um, and again they did not use their aoe attacks so i think we're going to be hurting here yeah we got wiped now another thing is we don't really have a lot of sustain on this team uh, the only one doing healing is Basalt. And then the Vampire Lord grants the uh, drain effect. Life drain to everybody with the Vampire effect. But that you need to do large amounts of damage for that to help recover your HP at all. That's not going to help Darien. 
it's really not going to help the salt very much either. So what we're looking at is how does come to us as AI hold up? <laughs> oh, that was, I just had to say that. Uh, the AI is horrible. Things just don't... I've seen multiple runs of Fire Rift Beast over the years playing this game where you know the unit has their AOE skills, the minions are out, the minions are about to move, and the unit just uses skill one. Like, oh, I don't want to use my AOE. And uh, but in this case, they did. So let's see if we can... And really what it breaks down to is on the fire rift beast, you're trying to balance doing big damage to the, the rift beast itself and then having enough AOEs available that if the minions get summoned, somebody's got an AOE and the, and the AI is going to work properly and someone uses their AOE. And there, they, Linda and Basalt both just use their AOE, which is great. We managed to survive those thorns again. Here come the minions again. Who has their AOE skills, and will they use it? Linda just went, took out all but one of the minions, so we should be good. We might even... Now, so he got to use his massive skill, and we might not survive this. Everybody's still up, which is pretty amazing. Uh, I think we're losing Darien. No one... Okay, so we got... There we go. We had two AoEs left, and we killed the boss. So we killed the Rift Beast. We got double S. Um, and like I said, in, in the 10 runs, it's... Um, if they use their AOE scales when they have them available, uh, then we get S or double S. If they derp, and the AI derps a lot, you're getting a, an, a, an A+. Plus. So, um, I will continue to work on this team. Uh, the goal is to get triple S and everything on auto all the time. Um, so we'll see... It might require us getting other monsters six starred and, and fully skilled, or we might need to summon something else that gives us an extra ability. And this is the Ice Beast team, and it doesn't have a lot of damage. Um, and the reason is you need speed, so you need speed buffs, and you need attack bar boosts uh, to remove the, the chilling effect that the Ice Beast puts on you. Let's see what that's called. So the Freezing Roar skill puts freezing air effect on all of your team. And uh, the only way you get rid of that is by boosting your attack speed so your attack bar is filling faster or by boosting your attack bar uh, the more your attack bar increases, the more you get rid of that effect. Um, so Bella is in here. And one of the things I really want to do is rerun Bella. I, just, I don't have the violent runes to do it yet. She's on speed, HP, HP, uh, swift shield. And she's fairly fast, but not very tanky. And she's only, she's very close to is she exactly a thousand defense? Yeah, so she's exactly a thousand defense and around 32k HP. So uh, no resistance, but um, doesn't matter as much in Rift Beasts. And her accuracy is only 50%, but that's enough uh, for what she needs to do. Um, and then the Vampire Lord is here again. Uh, Darian's here again, Crow. Helia, and then Ashir is the only other one we haven't seen yet. Um, Ashir's on Swift. Uh, Swift Blade. And he doesn't need to be on Swift for Rift Beasts. Uh, I actually hope to pull another Ashir at some point, 
So then I can have a PVE Bashir, which is on violent whatever, violent shield probably, and then have um, a PVP Bashir that's on swift for RTA. Um, now I, I could put him uh, on violent uh, for PVE, but then uh, I, he's not as helpful in Siege. So I, I like his speed in Siege. So that's why he's on what, what he's on. Um, where'd he go? There he is. So Ashir is speed, crit damage, HP, and 67% um, crit rate, 141% crit damage. Uh, he needs a little more accuracy so he can strip. Um, and he needs some skill ups. Um, but overall not a bad monster. So let's see how this one this one goes. Uh, I haven't looked at Ice Beast in a while, so I'm not quite sure. Uh, and I haven't been paying attention to my 10 runs. Which is something you probably should do. Because, uh, so there you can see the freezing effect is about half of their attack bars. We just boosted our speed. Our attack bars are filling up pretty good. And the freezing effect is gone off everybody in the front row. And it looks like everybody in the back row. So we are cruising along. Pretty good damage. And there's the freezing air effect again, but we're gonna, there we go. So he's into his groggy state. Let's get that nice. Hell, you got defense break and scar on the first hit. So we are looking at, and then we also have a shears um, heal block, which gives another debuff, which makes Crow do more damage. So there was Crow doing about 400K And we're at over 2.2 million before we exit the group. So 2.3 million when you exit the groggy state. And it's really a matter of timing of when the Rift Beast does his thing and how my monsters react. Bella did an instant. So Bella's AI seems pretty good in the Ice Beast. Um, even if your team is not wounded and you have the freezing effect on your team, Bella will use her heal. So I think she, I think the AI knows that she can help remove that ice freezing effect. Uh, and it's off of everybody again. And now it comes back. Ashir just did his speed buff. Uh, Bella just did her mobilize. Here comes Thorns, which can be hurt. Yeah, not horrible. Boss is at half health. So you can see two monsters got frozen because the freezing effect was not off of them yet. So, um, but everybody survived the big skill. If we can get a heal in by somebody. Here comes the freezing roar again. We really need a heal. I think we're going to lose Vampire Lord. There's a heal. Here comes the thorns. Everybody survived that. About one fourth the boss's HP left. Oh, well, there's another freeze, but it's only on Helia. Here comes the freeze again. Can we get out of it before he tries to free, uh, freeze us again? Um, here comes the thorns. We should be able to survive that. Yep, not a problem there. And there we go. The Rift Beast is down. We got another double S. Uh, so we need to work on everyone's runes to get more damage, but at least the survivability is very good there. So we've already looked at those. So the last one is wind, and this is the one I've been having the most difficulty with. Because, um, so the big thing about the wind beast is that 
it puts uh, an electricity effect. Let's let's find out the proper term here. So it does the lightning roar and gives electric shock effect to everybody. So anytime they have the electric shock on them, they take more damage from the uh, rift beast and it ignores all damage reduction effects uh, whenever it's used. So um, does a lot of things. Let's take a look at the. So one thing you can do is you can look at the. So you go here to the to the boss. To, you go to the. You go here to the wind beast. You look at strategy info. You click on monster info, and you can see what monsters are being used against this dungeon. Um, crow. Uh, you know a lot of fire monsters. Fran's in there too. Uh, Vampire Lord. Rauk is obviously number one. So if you're wondering about who you have built that might be able to help you on any of these, you can do this on any of the Rift Beasts. Just click on that strategy info, look at who else, who is using what. And that should give you some ideas, hopefully. But let's take a look at this run. And then we'll come back and we'll look at the monsters that I have in here. But Basalt, uh, Bella, and Amon are all there to heal because that you want that electric shock effect off of you as quickly as possible. So almost no damage there from the thorns. They're weak before the boss goes into groggy state. Now we have the electric shock again, but Amon gets almost everybody out of it. And we're into groggy state already. So now, there we got a really nice defense break early. Now we need a brand from either Helia or Crow as quickly as possible. There's the brand. We've got our attack buff up. So the Vampire Lord is there, obviously. Tanky front row, we want the attack buff and the leech effect. Or the um, life drain effect. So about 2 million damage. Here comes the lightning roar again. See how quickly we can get, if we can get rid of the electric shock. There's a mobilize and there's a mon. So that's why I like a mon in this rift beast. Is every time he attacks, he, buzz, he does a heal of 20% of his max HP on everybody. Um, now that effect is reduced from the electric shock. But because she, because he's in, and he's also on violent. So one of the things I noticed about this team is after the groggy state, if Amon just gets a lucky violent proc, um, that makes things much better for survivability. And if he doesn't violent proc, then we end up with what we have here, which I think we're going to fail. So we only got A plus that time around. And we're, we'll play it once again and I'll show you why. Uh, so this, I don't know when I got double S on this Rift Beast because uh, wind has always been a problem. Uh, you know, we have nice damage from Crow and Helia. But that's it. Everybody else does next to nothing in damage, including the Vampire Lord. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the main reasons we are not having consistent S yet on this Wind Rift Beast is that is that we're simply not doing enough damage. We're coming out of the uh, groggy state, and it, we're usually right around two million damage, and that's just not enough. If, uh, and the score isn't that big of a deal. You only need, uh, I believe it's 3.5 for triple S, so you don't need a lot. 
Um, and I, I will need to double check and I'll put in the comments down below here the thresholds for A plus, S, S2, S3. Um, so we're looking a little better here right now. So there's a mobilized life dreams happening again. Now you'll see those that still had the electric shock on them got hurt pretty badly. And yeah, we're probably going to wipe here. There goes Bella. No, and we lose Crow. That's it. We're not we're not getting that last little bit of damage done. It's just not going to happen. So that's where our issues are with this one. We need more damage. Um, it really kind of hurts that we've got four monsters who basically aren't doing much damage. So let's take a look at that team one more time. So Basalt, Bella, Vampire Lord, and Amon are not doing uh, much damage at all. Uh, Amon's on a, on a crit rate rune instead of a crit damage rune because I can't get him to 100% uh, crit rate if I put a crit damage rune on him. So someday, if I can get Amon on a crit damage rune, um, so he's on HP, crit rate HP. If I can get him on HP, crit damage HP, he'll do a decent amount more damage. Um, but his damage is based also off of um, your max HP. So um, he needs better runes. But the, the real issue here is we only have Crow and Helia doing real damage. Everybody else is fairly minimal. Um, and that's because we need a lot of heal. So Basalt heals, Bella heals, Grandpa, Vampire Lord. The Vampire Lord grants the, what's it called? Uh, vampire effect. It's a life drain essentially, um, which everybody can use to heal up. And that can really help Crow and Helia stay alive. Uh, but that vampire effect isn't gonna help these three very much. And then Amon's in there for the constant heal. Um, one of those four needs to be replaced with another damage dealer at some point because that wind rift beast is almost always getting to his big skill and that kind of means the end of the team. So anyway, that's where we're at. Uh, I wanted to show, I think I've now shown all of the runes on all of the monsters. Uh, and you can pause the screen when I was showing the, uh, pause the video when I was showing the runes so you can see uh, more clearly. And that's where we're at on Rift Beasts. And um, I'll do another update on this in a couple of months when everything's super stable. And you'll see how the teams change and how their rooms get better. And another big thing to do, I'm just always harping on this, but do your towers. Um, so we're going to get ready for summons. We're going to put, we're going to get GV12 going again. Now we can go into the craft building and we can see these are the three fusion monsters I just made and at least so far Comptuous allows you to, to feed fusion monsters in for your LD pieces. So we now have five LD scrolls from pieces whereas if I wasn't able to do that we would have been stuck with four. Um, now the one big question around this is it a wise use of resources to fuse nine four star monsters every week in order to do that because uh, unless you're a whale and you're summoning a ton of monsters you're not going to get that many nat fours um, and for this LD only account um, there are some So when you come here and you look in the sealed shrine, like if I get a light or dark sniper, I'm absolutely building it. If I get a light or dark 
Kamun, I'm absolutely building it. So I need to hang on to these skill ups so that I can have things fully skilled when I eventually summon them. Um, so is it a good use of your time? Because that's you're going to burn energy, you're going to burn experience boosts, and, and you're going to need to farm more essences in order to awaken those things to make a fusion monster. Just to feed it right away for 10 LD pieces after you made three of them. Is that a use, good use of resources? And I think for a normal account, I would say no, uh, without question. Um, it's just unless you have a ton of monsters that you've just done a ton of summoning, um, it just doesn't make sense. For an LD only account, um, I think it makes a little more sense, but I still don't think it's a very good trade-off. Um, and right now, I'm still willing to do it because uh, it's early in the count. I want to get as many LD toys as I can. But there we just fed, uh, over the course of the day today, I fed nine four-star monsters. There were, there were some were fusions I made and some were fusions I got um, just from summoning. So really, the last LD that we pulled today, if we get something good from that, then it was worth fusing. Uh, if we don't, it's probably a waste of resources. So that's something you need to think about uh, if you're running an LD-only account. We don't have a ton of summons uh, because now that the you can't feed net fives anymore, and uh, feeding net fours is, is a questionable thing you should be doing, I have been summoning my mystical scrolls for fodder uh, off camera. And I haven't really gotten much of anything, so uh, I'm assuming that, that, uh, that that's going to continue. It doesn't really matter if we summon with special event or not for the, the regular Nat 4. So uh, there's, so that's one of the, the Water Griffin is one of the ones I need for fusions, so that's good. Uh, but that's kind of, as typical, pretty disappointing. The lightning rates in this game are sometimes just absolutely horrible. So nothing from 13 Mystics. We have three wind scrolls. Nothing there. We haven't even got a lightning out of 16 now. This will be 17. No, nope, no lightning. So we're below the average rate on lightnings. Um, so we got one legendary. It's an event monster. It's a four star. Um, yeah, okay, fire Eivor, whatever. Okay, so now everything that's left, we have five here. Um, so we have seven, we have eight chances, eight LD chances, so. Um, I think we'll do the set, this is, what are the rates here? Assassin's Creed scroll. Um, you have a 0.38% chance at a light dark five star. <laughs> now you have a 7.4% chance for a light dark four star. Um, so that would be wonderful. Um, and that's a higher chance than a regular LD. So let's see if we get anything here. Four star. I think that's the wind. Yeah, useless. Okay, not too happy about that. But what can you do? Okay, here we go. Um, okay, it's Lauren's today. Okay, Lauren, can you get us something good? All right. So seven LD chances, seven LD scrolls. Can we get one spark? That would be amazing. 
The other two things we're really looking for would be Shaman or Shren. Uh, so one of the things I attempted to do today was the Dimensional Predator. Uh, dark. So this month, the Dimensional Predator is one element only. Dark is just impossible. Uh, I don't have a good healer. Uh, Basalt's okay, but it, there's just not enough sustain. So the only way I think I can complete the Dimensional Predator is a light team and Shren or Shaman would be awesome because they both heal and do good damage. So that would be awesome. Let's see if we can get either a spark, special dungeon monster, that's a dupe. Garbage. Bella, another special dungeon monster. <sighs> Dupe Zinc. Probably not using that. Maybe for Siege. Dark Inferno. I believe that's a dupe as well. Dark Minotaur is garbage. <sighs> Emotional damage! You want some therapy? <sighs> okay. Thank you, Come to us. Um, that's Shaman. Light Griffin. He's awesome. Um, I'm going to build him immediately for Dimension Predator. Uh, I think he's the missing piece I need to be able to do it with a light team. So, um, first seven summons were awful, but when you get something you really need, that makes it a decent summon session. So, yeah, I appreciate the, the comments I've been getting recently. I've actually had quite a few comments on this light and dark only walkthrough. Uh, people really, uh, and the number of views is going up, so... Uh, looks like this series is becoming more popular, and I really appreciate that. I put a lot of effort into this LD Only account, um, and I know that there are players out there that are either thinking about doing an LD Only account or are already doing it, and I'm hoping that this series will help people uh, do better, uh, get further, get higher scores, uh, and just have more fun. Uh, this game's all about fun. So I really appreciate the support. Uh, the number of subscribers is going up. The number of views is going up. Uh, so it feels like the channel is making progress, and it's because of you guys. I really appreciate everyone who takes the time to watch even a small part of one of my videos because uh, it helps out the channel. Uh, if you have any comments or suggestions on what you want to see in this channel, please put it down in the comments below. Uh, until next time, see ya.